Hey everyone, Ninja Sinfrey here, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Halo Infinite's multiplayer. Halo is a franchise that is 20 years old and certainly has a lot of veterans playing the game, myself included. As such, it can be intimidating for newcomers that have never played Halo before. I've been playing Halo for almost 20 years now, and over the years of playing, I've learned a lot from every game in the series minus Halo 5. Just a bit of a disclaimer, I am not by all means a pro competitive player, neither have I participated in any Halo competitive scene. I'm just someone who casually plays Halo for what it is, and which is why I am making this video for newcomers that are trying Halo for the first time to build a foundation of how to get better at the game. Even if you've been playing Halo for a long time, maybe you'll learn something new in this video. With that said, let's get started. Double kill. Hello, let's do some damage. Number 1. Understanding the time to kill The time to kill in Halo can be debated if you look at it in a different perspective. As someone who used to play Call of Duty and Rainbow Six Siege, both of which have a faster time to kill, Halo had always had a longer time to kill than other games. This is by and large because of the shield and health system. This system has been the staple of the series since Halo 1 and that formula has not changed with Halo Infinite. To land a kill, the shields must be popped first and only then you can bring their health down to zero. Shields will automatically recharge after some time, likewise with your health. In Halo Infinite, the only weapons that are capable of one shot in the head are long range weapons like the S7 Sniper, Shock Rifle, or Skewer. Other weapons like the Battle Rifle takes about 5-6 to six shots in the body, Doing this will pop their shields and performing a headshot will land a final kill. If you consistently aim for the head, it will take up to 4 shots. Every weapon has their own different damage output and that is something you want to learn on your own. With the lower time to kill, this also puts a forefront of your skill as a player. Remember, your shields will be popped first and this gives you enough time to react on your next actions. Are you going to pursue and try engaging against your opponent or are you going to run for cover and flank your opponent instead? I know this is typically common sense in other games too, but I'm just pointing out that in Halo, you don't instantly get killed out of nowhere because of the lower time to kill. If someone shoots you first, then you are fully aware of the situation and it gives you enough time to react. Of course, if someone shoots you in the head with a sniper, well, there's nothing much you can do about it. Another thing you should always think about is predicting ahead of time of what you think the enemy is going to do. Are they going to throw a grenade in the spot? If so, then it means that it's my cue to back off from that area, or even throw a grenade in that same spot. We'll get into details about the grenades later on. Number 2. The Importance of Map Control In Halo, map knowledge and map control go hand in hand. The key to success is getting the right map positioning against your component. It could be things like knowing when and where the weapons will spawn, for example, or predicting where players will spawn, or simply making sure that you have control of power weapons in the map. Unlike other games where you have different loadouts, Halo still follows the traditional arena shooter formula where there are different weapons, equipments, and power-ups that you can pick up in the map. Equal Starts is another element to Halo that has not changed since the beginning. Everyone starts with the same weapon and same number of grenades. It's your job as a player to be seeking out different weapons, power-ups, or equipments to use, especially when it comes to power weapons like the sniper rifle or rocket launcher, or power-ups like the active camo or overshield. When used well, it can bring a huge advantage for your team. Hell, it can even change the outcome of your game if you play it smart. In Halo Infinite, it's much easier to identify when and where a weapon or power-up will spawn. There is typically a waypoint on your screen informing you how long they will spawn. Though, this waypoint is only visible for power weapons like the S7 Sniper, Rocket Launcher, Energy Sword, or Skewer, or power-ups like the Active Camo or Overshields. Do keep in mind that you should be ready to contest once the timer appears on your screen as there is a likely chance that the other team will swarm the area to prevent you from getting it. Other weapons like the Commando, Battle Rifle, Bulldog, and others typically spawn in a weapon rack all over the map. When the color is blue, then it means that the weapon can spawn back. There is an indicator on top showing you how much time before it spawns. Otherwise, if you see red, then whoever has the weapon must either drop it or empty the entire weapon. Another thing to point out is that Halo Infinite doesn't have a fixed weapon on every game that you play not unless you are playing ranked. But in casual, this is a big difference coming from previous Halo games where weapon placements are always the same every time. That's not the case here in Halo Infinite. Number 3. Understanding the Movement 
Beyond the base movement, you have mechanics like crouching, sprinting, sliding, and clamber. Sprinting in this game isn't any faster than base movement speed. However, there are two key important points for sprinting. For longtime Halo fans, you know that sprint was a debated topic for many years. While I'm not going to get into this rabbit hole, the one thing that was very annoying with the way sprint worked in previous Halo games is that you could not fire your weapon until the sprint animation is complete. This was a big difference coming from Halo 3 where your gun is always ready. But in Halo Infinite, your weapon is always ready to fire even if you are in sprint, which basically solves the sprint issue in Halo. The second important point is that this sliding mechanic will only work while sprinting. Sliding is a new mechanic introduced to Halo's blueprint system. As the name implies, it makes you slide. But there's a trick that you can use to give you an advantage. If you sprint, jump, and then landing on a slope, it will launch you much further. In comparison, here is a normal slide. As you can see, it doesn't get that far. However, if you sprint, jump, then trigger the slide mechanic, you can go even further. This is a huge advantage, especially if you need to run for cover or you need to pick up a power weapon before the other team. There's a lot of use cases for this and I definitely recommend going into weapon drills or custom games and trying it for yourself. Every map is different but the technique can still apply regardless. Clamber is another mechanic that was introduced in Halo 5, basically allowing you to jump on platforms or ledges much more easily. In a way, this is a replacement to crouch jumping which was a trick in older Halo games where it forces your leg upwards which reduces your height and allows you to jump into higher places or smaller gaps. This trick can still be done in Halo Infinite, but you must disable auto clamber in your settings. By disabling auto clamber, you need to press the jump button twice to use it. Also, with auto clamber disabled, it prevents you from unwanted actions when jumping on ledges, which can be an advantage in certain situations as it can prevent you from being locked into an animation state, because while in clamber, you can't fire or throw a grenade. Crouching is pretty much self-explanatory, and the benefit of crouching is to hide from radar. Very useful when you need to hide from cover until your shields have recharged. While on the topic of movement, I want to show you some techniques with the grapple shot, repulsor, and thruster. Alright, here we are on the map bazaar. I think this is a very good map to demonstrate to you guys the grapple shot. And there are two techniques that I'm going to be teaching you here to really help you improve how to use the grapple shot in a much more efficient way. Now, most people will use the grapple shot in a very basic way. For example, here, right, you pick up the grapple shot here, and most people will just do this. Right, go. most people will just grab onto that and then come up here much more quickly. While there's nothing wrong with that, there is a lot of room for improvement that you can really do to really help you improve the way you use the grapple shot. And that's why I'm going to be teaching you some of the other ways that you can use the grapple shot. Now, for example, here, if you want to go from where I'm standing at, to the other side of the map, which is right here. Now, if you have a grapple shot, it will be much easier to do. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. So if you look down here, right in this middle here, if you aim the grapple shot right here, then jump right about here, that should launch you a little bit higher to make you reach this part of the map. So I'll demonstrate to you right now. Grapple shot, jump, and there you go. Very, very simple. Again, one more time. Grapple shot. Jump. And then, there you go. Much, much simple to do. Also, one thing to note. Make sure you do not clamber when you're making this jump. Because like I said earlier, when you are clambering, you are in an animation state where you cannot fire your weapon or be able to throw a grenade. Again, let me demonstrate to you guys what I'm talking about. So if I clamber here, I won't be able to fire my weapon. As you can see, I can't fire my weapon until the clamber animation is complete. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the next one is making sharp turns with the grapple shot. This is something that most people don't seem to really know about. Because most people are just used to like grabbing onto this wall with the grapple shot and then just like, you know, just like that. But what you can do with the grapple shot is making sharp turns. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. So, for example here, if I want to go to this, you know, this, um, this cafe, and you want to get in there much more quickly, what you can do here is, see this corner right here of this building? What you want to do is grab onto that, then quickly look to your right, and then slowly bring it to the left. Alright? So, let me uh, demonstrate to you right now. So, grapple shot, look to your right, then bring it to your left. As you can see, very, very smooth. 
Let me do that one more time. So, grapple shot, look to your right, bring it to your left. Very, very smooth. Here's another scenario where if you have people chasing you and you need to run for cover. So, just follow the same technique I mentioned earlier. Grab that corner, look to your right, and then look to your left. Again, let's do that one more time. Alright, let's pretend that somebody's chasing me. Okay, I need to run for cover. Okay, grab onto that, look to your right, and then look to your left. That wasn't smooth, but that's kind of the idea here. You want to make that sharp turn. Again, one more time. Someone's chasing me. Alright, grab a shot, look to your right, then bring it to your left. Just like that. Very simple. Now, for other maps, you can probably practice the same thing. There's a lot of maps in Halo Infinite that definitely would benefit from this. And I definitely, you go through each map and figure out how things work because that can really give you an advantage, especially when it comes to objective game types like Capture the Flag or Oddball. So make sure you go through each map and learn the different, you know, the different parts of the map and eventually you get used to it, you know. This is something I love doing in Halo Infinite and certainly it's very fun to use. All right, um, moving on. Next up is the Repulsor. This is very simple. There's only like really two use cases for the equipment. For example, you can use it to deflect any projectiles or grenades or rocket launchers. And the second one, it can be used for like movement, which is one of the things I'm going to be teaching you here. All right, to do this, all you need to do is look down. And then as soon as you hit the jump button, trigger the Repulsor. So let me do that right now. Jump, Repulsor. Again, one more time. Jump, then Repulsor. Is it required that you have to jump to use the Repulsor? Sort of. You have to like use the jump. Otherwise, if you don't jump, this is what will happen. So for example, if I try to jump this without jumping, it's not going to bring you any higher. But if you jump and then use the Repulsor, like this, it's going to bring you much, much higher than that. See? That's quite a big difference. And last but not least, the thrusters. This used to be a core mechanic in Halo 5, but now in Halo Infinite, this has become an equipment that you can pick up on the map. Now, as far as any use cases for it, I really don't have much to really say about it. It's pretty much basic at this point. Um, I would say if there is a scenario where everybody is like throwing a grenade, like in this one spot here, you just use your thrusters to kind of get away from that and that's kind of one way of using it and the second one is if someone is chasing you right and uh, your shields are down you want to sprint then use your thrusters in this corner and that will give you enough boost to really help you escape from the enemy team you know while you are trying to get your shields back up and that's kind of the way i see things with the the thrusters i don't really see much use from it in terms of any strategy and it's pretty much basic and one more thing that we need to discuss is strafing in Halo. Strafing is essentially a technique of moving side to side or jumping or crouching while moving. The idea here is to make your movements unpredictable and it's something you'll commonly encounter in every gunfight. Number 4. The Importance of Melee and Grenades For a lot of newcomers to Halo, you may have noticed why it's so common to see grenade spam or melee commonly being used. At its core, Halo has followed a formula that Bungie has established since the very beginning. It's called the Golden Triangle. Those consist of weapon, melee, and grenade. These three make up the main tactics of attacking in Halo and is something you must take advantage of. In fact, this Golden Triangle was briefly hinted by Joseph Staten in a recent interview with IGN. We came up with 10, 10 epics. Um, one of those epics was that we really want to make sure, and indeed this was our first epic, that everybody understands what the equipment is, where to find it, how to use it, how to have fun with it, how to upgrade it. Because equipment like the grapple shot was the big addition to the Halo sandbox. It yep. really is like the fourth leg of the three-legged stool of grenades, melee, and weapons. Yeah. Grapple shot really is that fourth, that fourth leg of the stool. So it was one of the epics where we decided to double down. Um, and I helped with that process. That was number two. 
No matter which game you play, whether it's Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 3, Halo 5, or even here in Halo Infinite, these principles still apply and it's something you need to get used to. Grenades is just as important in the combat loop and you should always utilize it as much as you can. In Halo Infinite, you have different types of grenades. You have the standard frag grenade and this can be pretty deadly against your opponent. Plasma grenades have the capability to stick on another Spartan, which is a guarantee to kill. Or if they are in range of a plasma grenade, then they can pop their shields. Spike grenades have also returned in Halo and it works like a hybrid between the frag grenade and plasma grenade. The dynamo grenade is mostly used to pop shields or EMP a vehicle. Now I'm sure you're probably wondering what techniques can I do with these grenades. For anyone that has been playing Halo for a long time know the importance of grenade bouncing. I'm going to demonstrate why this is important, and one thing to note, this will only work with a frag grenade. In corners like this, for example this guy is right here, and you want to make sure that his shields are down. There are two ways of approaching this. One, you can throw a grenade off the ground, which will bounce off like this, as you can see here, which will potentially kill him. Or the second one is to bounce the grenade off the wall. The idea here is if there's enemies coming this direction, when you throw a grenade on the wall, by the time it reaches that point, it's going to explode and it could potentially lower their shields or potentially kill them all. And this is very important because if you have the grenades bouncing off the wall, it gives them less time to react. If you just throw it like this on the ground, it takes a while before the grenade will explode and the enemy has a little bit of time to kind of, you know, react to that. Melee is also another key important to the combat loop. Since Halo is largely in tight spaces with the exception of big team battle, you are likely to encounter a 1v1 situation with your opponent. When this happens, you should take advantage of it. Using melee will also help lower their shields, which then you can finish it off with a headshot or get the final kill. Number 5. Throwing the ball out of bounds. This is applicable to oddball, which is a game type where you must hold the ball to score. Now this strategy that I'm going to mention here is probably better when you have a group of friends, but you can still apply this if you decide to play on your own. Just hope that your team will be able to understand what you're trying to do. The idea here is when you are in a tight situation where your teammates are unable to protect you, your choice is to either to try and kill the enemy team on your own, which is very risky, or throw the ball out of bounds and forcing it to reset. By having the ball reset, this causes the enemy team to fall back and run to ball spawn. If in a proper team, you can tell your teammates to go to the ball spawn while the enemy is still trying to catch up, essentially still keeping your team in control of the ball at all times. Do note however, not every map has a out of bound area. For example, in the map streets, you can't throw the ball out of bounds anywhere, but in maps like live fire, you can throw the ball in the water. Also keep in mind that in Halo Infinite, it takes two hits to kill an enemy with a ball. Number 6. Flag Juggling if you play capture the flag, flag juggling is essentially a technique where you pick up the flag, then dropping it and picking it up again. Rinse and repeat. This basically gives you a speed boost because while holding the flag, your movement is slightly slower, which will make it easier for the enemy to catch up. In addition, it also gives you an opportunity to be able to fire back at the enemy while they are chasing you. Well, there you have it everyone, those are my tips for Halo Infinite's multiplayer. I hope that you learned something from this video, and I also hope that many of you will enjoy Halo for what it is. And remember to always have fun with the game, eventually you will get better at it, you never know. If you have other tips or strategies you want to share with everyone, feel free to post them down in the comments. Alright everyone, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, bye for now. Cause I like, cause I like to be myself If you're not agree, you can walk away You can walk away, you can walk away Something, something in my mind Pays me, then the pays me, then I ain't nobody perfect